on Earth's surface. Do you guys remember how we were wearing the face changes? Yes. Yeah. Here we have a cup of water. How that I just filled up with water from the sink. How do you think the water is? Warm. How old? Me this morning. <laughs> just got it out of the sink. Yeah. How old do you think it is? Two seconds. Um, it's actually really old. It's about 2.6 billion years. Oh. The reason why it's so old is because it's recycled through the water cycle. My dad recycles. <laughs> Um, we're going to be using a heat lamp today to model the sun. Does anyone know what a model is? Like a mannequin? Um, no. What about people you see in a magazine? Okay, a model that's a fashion model, but in science, a model is a simplified representation of what we are actually trying to study. The sun can get up to 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Our lamp doesn't get that hot, that's why it's called a model. Um, we're going to use models today to try to answer our question from the day, which is, how does water move above and on Earth's surface? So, what we have here is a picture of what? The water, the water cycle. cycle. The water cycle, that's right. So my partner's going to pass out a worksheet so that you guys can all have this as well, and we're going to fill it out together. Awesome, so now we all have it, let's fill it out together. So, the water cycle starts usually with what? What do you, what do you think usually causes rain. the water cycle? Rain. Okay, so where do you think rain is here? What number? Uh, three. three. Number three, that's right. There's a special word for rain and snow and sleet and all the things that come down from the sky. Does anybody know what that word is? I'll tell you. It's precipitation. Write this down on your worksheet and then say precipitation. Precipitation. So we have now the arrow. It's going down into the ground and it's landing on the ground here. And we have number four. And number four is this river. And that's called runoff. When you have a lot of water that comes down and it can't get all absorbed into the ground, you create sometimes rivers or lakes or streams. That's called runoff. Can everybody say runoff? Runoff. Run Good. When you have a lot of runoff, all the lakes and the rivers can co come together to make what sometimes? Oceans. Oceans and... What else? Ponds. Ponds and lakes. That's right. They make big bodies of water. And we call those a collection. So that's number five. Everybody say collection? Collection. collection. So now we have all of our water in a giant body of water. But then the sun is shining down on this water. And it's causing some of the water to turn into a gas. And what do we call that process that we learned uh, with lesson number one? Evaporation. That's right, evaporation. So everybody say evaporation. 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 That is the process of turning a water from a liquid to a gas. And then our last step is here in the clouds. Who has ever seen had a glass of cold water sitting on their table and they notice water sometimes gets on the outside of the glass? Me. Me. Does anybody know what that's called? That's called condensation. So what happens is that you have all the water that's gas coming together and making liquid. And that's what's happening in the clouds. Condensation. Can everybody say condensation? Condensation. Good job. And now we have completed our water cycle. So at the beginning of class, I filled a cup up with some water and I put a piece of plastic over it and I'm holding it down with a rubber band and we're going to see what happens at the end of class. So Luis, can you tell me, do you see anything on top of the cup right now besides the plastic? No. No. Alright, so let's see if that changes in class. We're just going to leave it right there. Okay. So for today's lesson, we are going to be doing models of three different environments. 
uh, and their water cycle in those environments, what it looks like. We're going to look at a, an ice environment, a mountain environment, and a forest environment. And you're going to work with the people at your table, the four people at your table. So my partner is going to pass out job cards and worksheets so that we can uh, and then we'll let the materials manager come and collect the materials so that we can begin the expression. While you're waiting, uh, share with your partners what job you have. So we're going to talk through how to do the different setups, and we're going to do them together. So first you're going to start with the ocean water setup, and you have a cup with a rock. And what I want you to do is I want you to fill the cup up to the 100 milliliter line. You see there's a little black line on your cup, you should fill it up to that line of water with your pipette. Once you have it filled up with water, I want you to take some ice and I want you to put the ice in the cup. And observe what happens. What happened? Okay. <laughs> what happened to the ice? It melted. What happened to the water? It rose. It rose. Why do you think it rose? Because the ice melted. That's All right. Water. Yes, because the ice melted. So we have. Where do we have large amounts of ice on our planet? The poles. The North poles. Pole. The North Pole and the South Pole. And right now, the the ice caps are melting, and they are causing what to happen? Do you think, based upon this demonstration? Our oceans. Our oceans. They're, they're too, getting bigger. They're getting taller. They're getting taller. They're, they're rising. getting. They're rising. Good job. So. Next, we're going to look at this mountain environment. And you have a cup with some paint and a clear cup with some poles and a small little cup. I want you to take your rock, you're going to put it into the small cup. And then put some dirt into the cup with the holes. And then put some water in it. I want you to see what happens with the water. What did you guys notice happened with the water? When you put it into the cup, where'd it go? It dripped into the soil. It dripped into the soil. Did it stay in the soil? Uh, some, some did, some like leaked. Leak? Where did it leak? To the bottom of the cup. To the bottom of the cup. Right. This is showing that the water went from the soil. Some of the water got absorbed into the soil, and some of the water was it was too much, and it made a collection underneath. Everybody say absorb. Absorb. Everybody say collection. Collection. Good job. Our next model is a forest model. And here you have a leaf and some soil. And you're going to put the soil and leaf in the cup and put some water in it and observe what happens. So what happened is that at this time, we didn't have a, a reservoir underneath. So all the water just got absorbed into the soil. It didn't drip down the leaf, just unlike what happened with the mountain environment. So now we're going to clean up all of our materials, and uh, so materials managers bring up all the materials. So let's review what happened in each model that we did. In the ice cap model, what did you guys observe? We saw that the water rose and we added ice. Correct. Um, why do you think that happened? Because the ice melted. Yes. So when the ice cap mount into the ocean, it causes the water ocean level to rise. Um, uh, so what will happen if this continues? Like if the ocean level continues to rise? We're going to be covered in water. Yeah, the land is going to eventually become covered in water. Have you guys heard of global warming? Yes. yes. What is global warming? It's where the earth gets hotter and all of our ice caps melt. Yeah, so the earth is getting warmer, and which is causing the ice caps to melt and our ocean water to rise. Um, what happened in our mountain model? When the rain fell on the mountain, what happened? It gathered at the bottom. Okay, yes. Um, it also ran off to, into the sun, which is known as a runoff. Can you guys say it with me? Runoff. So a runoff is 
The drainage of water to garden bodies of water. It's also when it um, slides off hard surfaces. Is that why you see lakes on top of mountains sometimes? Mm, yeah, that's known as collection. Ah. Collection is when it water stays in one area, such as a lake or a pond. Make sure you're filling up your worksheet as you go along. So what happened when it fell on the field? On the soil. What did the soil do? Absorb. Yes, it absorbed the water. So absorption is when something takes in or soaks something. As my partner mentioned before, what happened below the surface of their mountain model? The water collected. Correct. And this is known as an aquifer. So an aquifer is a collection of water underneath the earth's surface. During your forest model, there are two types of rain. Uh, forest. There's a rainforest and a temperate forest. What is the difference between these two forests? Does anyone know? There's lots of rain and rainforest. Yeah, correct. So the difference is about a rain. Well, in the rainforest, it gets a lot of rain, while the temperate only gets, it gets less than 4%. Or, yeah, 4 feet, less than 4 feet of rain per year. Um, how do you think this affects the quality of the soil in these types of rainforests and the temperate forests? The soil is really wet in the rainforest. Yeah, okay. Um, what else? More water animals? Um, in the rainforest, since it rains a lot, the quality, the quality of the soil isn't as good as in the temperate forest, is when it rains a lot, the nutrients are washed away. So, which forest has better soil? Temperate. Correct. So, how do we interact with the water cycle? We drink water. Yeah, okay. We use it every day. Um, what are other ways that we use water? We boil water. We boil water. We wash our cars with water. Okay. Yeah, those are good examples. Um, so, we're, every day we are asked like, to conserve water, so some, what are some things that you guys do to try to reduce water? Brush your teeth without the water running. Yeah, okay, that's good. Um, Shirley, can you give me an example? Take quick showers. Yeah, okay, that's good. So, have you guys heard of water pollution? Yes. What is water pollution? The water very dirty. Yes, the water is contaminated. Um, this is due like to um, because of humans mostly. We're gonna demonstrate with using our mountain model how polluted water can affect the soil and how it can run into our oceans and our aquifers. So why do you think it's important to keep the water clean? Because we drink it. Yes, everyone uses the water. So if we have contaminated water that is just being recycled, everyone's going to use that dirty water. Um, did anyone hear of the oil spill that occurred in the Gulf of Mexico a few years back? Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Um, so that, the human, like, we were responsible for that oil spill. It took a long time to clean, and not only did it affect the quality of the water, but it also affected the marine animals. So that's why it's very important to keep our water clean, because everyone needs water. So now we're going to do show what you know. So I want you to look at the questions on the board with your partners and try to come up with answers and then we will talk about it as a class. Great, now you guys have had a few minutes to talk about it, so let's do it as a class. So 
Number one, what is not a process in the water cycle? Raise your fingers if you think it's one, two, three, or four. <laughs> That's right, all of these are processes in the water cycle. Good job. Now let's answer number two. What can happen if there is an imbalance of the water cycle? A, B, C, or D? That's right, all of these things can in fact happen. If we have an imbalance of the water cycle, that means that, that the water can't get filtered like it does when you have an aquifer, or we could have a major drought, just like we are having here in Texas, or you could even have a huge flood if you get too much rain, which we probably would like to have here in Texas. So that's right, all done. Now number three, looking at the image to, over there, how much of the Earth's water is actually available for drinking? A, B, C, or D. That's right. Only 0.5% of all the water on Earth is available for water. So what do you think that means? What should we do with, with the water that we have? Save it all. We should save it or we should be conservative about it because there's only so much water that's available for us to drink at any time. Our last question, number four, most of Austin's drinking water comes from the Edwards Aquifer, which is an underground fresh water supply. During the summers of intense drought, or always drought like we're having right now, the flow rate of natural water springs connected to the aquifer decrease. Why do you think that is? A, B, C, or D? That's right. In fact, all of these things are problems with the aquifer when we are in a drought because there's all, everybody still needs water to drink, so water is still being pumped from the aquifer, even if we could try to conserve some. And also the soil is drier, which means it's harder for, it's going to absorb more water and less of the water is going to go into the aquifer. And then finally, there, since there's no rain or less rain, obviously not so much water is going to get into the aquifer. So good job, guys.